Here's a fun test for you. Get out a sheet of paper, a pen, and a timer. This is a two minute timer that I stole from one of my family's board games like six years ago now at this point. In two minutes, write down as many uses as you can for these two paper cups. Go ahead and pause the video to do that now. Most likely your list seems pretty unoriginal. Drinking apple juice, eating cereal if you have no clean bowls, <laughs> use it to water your plants. We don't have any plants, but yeah. <laughs> you probably wrote out some things that you already use paper cups for, or maybe this exercise stumped you and you didn't write down anything, or maybe you didn't even pause the video. You didn't even participate in the exercise. Mm -hmm. Either way, this doesn't mean that you're unoriginal or uncreative. Like stretching before you go for a run, you need to warm up your brain a bit. I say that as if I ever go for a run. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but around two years ago, there was this bug going around. Here in France, everything shut down. You had to have a hall pass to go to the grocery store. Without clubs and restaurants and even commuting to work to keep us occupied, people started to get bored. <laughs> After the initial shock of the panini wore off, we started to adjust and the boredom sparked creativity. Someone somewhere out there decided to start the bread baking wave. Lots of people, including myself, started experimenting with our hair, our makeup. I saw plenty of random homemade Rube Goldberg machines sprawled out across Reddit. If that's not worldly enough evidence for you, I don't know what is. Boredom leads to creativity. Boredom breeds brilliance. So what about those cups? In 2014, two psychologists decided to take this brainstorming activity even further. Sandy Man and Rebecca Cadman created three groups. The control group, the active boredom group, and the passive boredom group. The control group did what you did, right? You did it. They jumped right into the brainstorming session. They told the active boredom group to first copy out phone numbers from a phone book for 20 minutes. They told the passive boredom group to read these numbers out loud for 20 minutes. Afterward, they asked both boredom groups to brainstorm ideas for the two paper cups. The active boredom group came up with better ideas than the control group, upcycled potted plants, sandbox toys, but the passive boredom group scored the highest in creativity. Earrings, telephones, musical instruments, a Madonna-style bra. Our brains have an executive action network. It activates when we're focused on doing something, usually with an end goal in mind. For example, brainstorming, writing things down. But when we're bored, doing mindless tasks or daydreaming, then we're using the default mode network. For example, reading things out loud when you don't need to retain the information. The control group only activated their executive action network. The active boredom group activated their EAN twice while writing down the phone numbers and while brainstorming their activities. The passive boredom group activated both networks. And this, com oh my God, I'm gonna fall. And this combination seemed to work the best for a creative outcome. This makes sense even in practice. Although it may feel like it, your brain isn't actually switched off when you're in the default mode, it's still hard at work in the background, processing, making connections. Sometimes I get my greatest ideas in the shower or when I'm washing the dishes. Getting bored lets our minds come up with ideas that we can put into action later. So if we know that we can benefit from boredom, why do we hate it so much? For one, extreme or constant cases of boredom can negatively impact our mental health. I used to feel like if I was bored, then I wasn't being productive. But as we've seen, it works to our advantage if we can find a good balance between boredom and productivity. Also, being left alone with my thoughts can be kind of terrifying. Personally, I find myself trying to avoid boredom because I want to avoid those negative thoughts. There's no difference between people who react poorly to boredom and those who don't. <laughs> At least that's what researchers found in a 2019 study on frontal EEG changes across a boring task. The researchers decided that the most likely explanation was individual response. In other words, we can choose to be proactive about our boredom. I'm not saying it's easy, but over time it gets better with practice. It's uncomfortable to get bored. I get it. Our minds crave stimulation and it's so easy to get stimulated, overstimulated even. You're scrolling the boredom away. You're swiping right on novelty, a notification, another one, accept an invite, decline a meeting. That's boring. You're clearing your inbox, favoriting a funny tweet, leaving a comment on this video, living vicariously through influencers, clicking on link after link after link after link after link. Get bored. It doesn't have to be for very long. Five minutes, 20 minutes. Don't say you don't have the time because if you're watching this video, you have the time. People who allow themselves to get bored think more creatively than those who don't. From the paper cup experiment, Mann explained, when we're bored, we're searching for something to stimulate us that we can't find in our immediate surroundings. So we might try to find that stimulation by our minds wandering and going to someplace in our heads. That is what can stimulate creativity because once you start daydreaming and allow your mind to wander, you start thinking beyond the conscious and into the subconscious. This process allows different connections to take place. It's really awesome. So pause before you sit down and start to brainstorm for your next creative project. I want you to first try something passive that will bore you out of your mind. You can also try to bake your brainstorming right into your boring daily life. After hours of grading exam papers, Tolkien came across a blank page submitted by one of his students. He said, glorious, nothing to read. So I scribbled on it, I can't think why. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. But to take advantage of your boredom-inspired ideas, you have to let go of the need to think of something great. You can't be picky yet. Stop 
tagging your ideas with that's not good enough that's terrible you'll weigh down your craft before you even give it the chance to get off the ground not every idea will be a brilliant idea but be kind to your mind and build yourself and your project up with each idea give yourself a chance the connections you can make from default mode to executive action are so powerful your mind is always working let it wander let yourself be bored as always thank you for watching and please spay and neuter your cats